Hi right, guys, Outdoor Idiot here, back at you for another one. Yesterday, a little bit of an adventure for me. Went out chasing shell crackers, come across two crappie, a channel cat, and a bass. And we went to a place called County Lake. It's a lot of fun. The size limits there are a bit different. No size limit on crappie, bass. You can keep the small ones, but you can only keep one big one. So uh, it was a lot of fun. I'll show you some of that footage right now. Something a little better now. I don't know what it is yet. That's a little bass, I'm betting. It's a crappie. Of course. Shot man. Keeping this guy. Well, it's about freaking time, guys. Caught something we can keep. Probably switched over to a little chop magnet jig head, a little chop magnet worm. Snag a little crappie out of there. How about that? Let's get one, two more fish, and I'd like as many as I can get, but one or two more, we can. Have a good dinner. I think Stephanie's got a big pharmacy thing tonight, so I'm on my own for dinner. I wonder if that's what I've been losing, guys. These are the scarce bites on the worm, and then I'm losing them probably. Madison County Lake, there's no size limit on the crappie, so it's pretty nice. I'm guessing that one's around 9.5, 10 inches. They probably make 10. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. There's something bigger. Something bigger. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with me today, guys? I've lost more fish than I've caught, and they're always the big one. I think it's just because I'm using targeting these little fish, and I'm using these tiny little hooks, and when something big comes along, you know? So they like the action. I have to give them action is what they like, it seems like. Almost as if I'm forcing them to bite it. I think that's another crappie. There's another crappie. On this little bit of pole, guys, a lot of fun. I might be able to pluck a few out of here. Perfect. Good eating size crappie, guys. So the nice county lake, 30 crappie, no size limit. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I ended up losing a lot of fish yesterday. It's kind of the story of my life. But we came home with a mixed bag, and we're going to show you the best fish tacos. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter what type of fish you use. This recipe is amazing. So I'm going to hopefully take care of these real quick, get them on salt water, and then start cooking. So here we go. I guess I'll take care of the catfish first. It's usually the most trouble. So let's find that little bone. You have to come right over top of that little bone. Break those ribs, guys. 
A lot of guys use an electric fillet knife. You don't need one. I don't know if I've shown you that little handy trick yet. You don't even have to cut all the way through. And then just take those ribs out, guys. You want to try to get just right in the perfect. I'm gonna throw it on some ice water, but we'll rinse it off inside really good. Same here, guys. Just that little bone. You're trying to just find that bone, and then break those ribs. Follow that backbone get to the end. And you don't have to do this. I usually don't because I can get a better thing, but I'm trying to be in a hurry today, guys. So, that nice fly right there. Yeah, this, this is simple as that. Perfectly cleaned out catfish. I don't know what. 30 seconds. So. Bam. Beautiful piece of meat. That was a little slimier than the rest of the fish, so I just like to clean them off. Bass. This size bass, guys, you can do the same way I would do those red ear sunfish. Just boom, boom. Break those ribs again, follow that backbone. You can even do that, but we'll just, yeah, I'm not hurry, so we'll do that with all of them. I believe the term in the fishing world is taco bass and that's what we're gonna do with it these little bass are delicious guys and in a lake like county lake we are allowed to keep them and they encourage you keeping the smaller ones it's oh it's perfect so i love going there and i caught everything on a pink trout magnet of all things so. Chasing shell crackers and you come home with a crappie of bass and a channel cat. Can't complain. Uh, this is the creme de la creme of fresh water right here, guys. The crappie. Ooh, broke the down tail, but it's alright. Just get a little handle. Clean them up fast, guys. Outdoor idiot likes to eat. I want to get this done and get it eaten. Handle on this gill here. There we go. Perfectly cleaned out fish, perfect fillets. Try to get just along that rib cage, guys. Bottom piece right there. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect piece of crappie. Perfectly cleaned out. You can see my fingers getting inside the fish, guys. Do one more here. And I caught all these guys, four pound fluorocarbon on an ultralight, ugly stick, light pro. So it was a lot of fun. And if you're looking for a versatile rod, guys, the Ugly Stick Light Pro, you can't get more versatile than that. I have some six foot ones, and they will do anything from bluegill to big catfish. So if you want that one rod to take with you on adventures when you necessarily can't take a lot of gear, get the Ugly Stick Light Pro. Slap your favorite reel on there. Quantum Optics, you can't go wrong with that. I get the Quantum Optics 40 for that one. And like I said, it's just so versatile, guys. You can catch all the small bluegill, but you can still catch those big blue cats. I mean, anything in between. Perfectly cleaned out crop, you guys. All right. Well, I'll show you guys the best fish tacos. I promise you that. Bailey girl, I know what you want. I know what you want. I know why you're here. I know why you're here. Sit for me, sweetheart. Take nice. Good girl. Bill, you probably don't like it, but you want to sit too? She likes it better if I make her sit and then she thinks she earned it. Oh, yeah. Bailey, you get Bill wants it cooked. Bailey's savage. She don't eat anything raw. Show you guys the process how we rinse them off and put them in salt water. Just get them nice and clean. Yeah, so Caleb got these cleaned up really nice. I'm just making sure these catfish don't have a big bloodline in them. Getting them rinsed off in some nice cold water. Gonna throw them in a salt bath over here. 
she's the final check for bones too. Stephanie so always helps me with that while I'm cleaning the filet guts from outside. She's in here rinsing them all. So we just put them in a little water bath. How much salt is that? Uh, a tablespoon. About that much. Yeah, about that much. We don't measure around here. You guys just put them in a little salt water and we'll throw that in the refrigerator. And you could do that up to, like I said, up to 48 hours. Um, the crappie and the bass don't really need that as much. The catfish, it helps a lot. They have a stronger fishy flavor. I guess, you know, more pronounced flavor. But we're just going to do this for the next 20 minutes. We're going to run to the store real quick, grab some odds and ends and a side. And uh, when we come back, they'll be ready to go. And it, I mean, it makes all the difference, guys. All right, guys. Well, as usual, outdoor idiot style. It's late and we're cooking dinner. So this is real life, this is what we do. I promised you I would show you the best fish taco recipe and that's what this is, okay? So if you think I'm a tornado normally, when it's a recipe I know how to do, it's a real tornado. It's a tornado with a purpose. So here I go, guys. What you're gonna want, you're gonna want some flour. Don't measure anything, so I don't know. Mm, that much make a mess while you're doing it it's important you need some cornmeal I like a little less cornmeal than flour but you can go a little heavier whatever you want again don't measure anything about that much you need some garlic powder eyeball it guys all right guys well our GoPro just cut out um, but I just threw a little garlic powder now you're gonna need some onion powder and guys, that's life. I, I traded a rifle for this GoPro. I don't know how to edit, don't know how to film. Three weeks ago, I didn't know anything. So we're still learning and we might have a few technical difficulties. Anyway, onion powder, garlic powder, about that much. Secret ingredient, guys. It's no secret, actually. I'm in love with this stuff. And look, we eyeball everything, all right? If you're gonna cook down here in the South, you gotta have a few things. You gotta have a good eyeball, because you don't measure anything. I'm gonna go a little bit more onion powder. You gotta have good taste buds because we taste everything we cook. And you gotta have soul. You just gotta know what you're doing is right. So now we're at some black pepper, guys. Fresh cracked is always better, but just whatever you have on deck. A little salt. Again, I like this kosher salt. It's thick, adds texture. It's just I think it tastes a little better. Then, the secret. The real secret. You can't laugh. I'm giving away my secrets, guys. My mother taught me this when I was 15. She told me that's what I needed for my fish batter. I've been doing it. Oh, it's perfect. So thank you, Mom. A little sugar, guys. Not too much. Maybe that much. Tablespoon at most. At most. Probably a half teaspoon, maybe. Yeah, it's really not very much. It's a little bit of sugar. Then, get a fork. Mix that up. And here guys, at this point, if there's something that you think is off about it, this is where you change it. This is where you correct your mistakes. So I always just grab a little pinch. You need more, more flavor guys. You need more punch. That's where this comes into play. Why those taste buds are so important, guys. I don't measure anything, but I know what this recipe is supposed to taste like. Oh, what about out of onion powder? We're just gonna. Oh, yeah, look at that. Lots of onion powder. And that's a good thing, too. If you make a mistake and put too much seasoning in this batter, I add just some flour, I add just some cornmeal, but the way I just tasted it, I think we're gonna need as much as we can get here. Oh yeah, that's money. Perfect. Said guys, don't measure anything, but my taste buds know. So that's our dry batter. Now, the real secret stuff here, guys. Hesitant to share my secret recipes, but it's gotta be done, I reckon. 
in the name of science. I'm gonna get a little bit of butter here. Throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds or so, whatever, soften it up, melt it down. I'll show you guys where the secret comes into play. Make a good mix. I'm go ahead and clean up a little bit. heat really well so it's very forgiving. If you can afford it, peanut oil is always the best. As long as you're not allergic to peanuts I reckon. But vegetable oil works just fine. Quarter inch, half inch in the pan, whatever you got. And let's check on this butter. It's pork, so and we want it all the way soft, so we'll put it in there just a smidge longer. Get that oil heated up. Get that going. I don't want it to heat up too fast. I'm gonna put it just below medium, and when it starts to get a little hot, I'll bring it up to a medium heat. Get our oven preheated to 350. Gonna roast some tortillas. I normally do the tortillas on a skillet, but I don't really have the patience to sit here and do them one by one right now, so we're going to just throw them on a pan. You have a big griddle. Alright guys, perfect. Butter's melted. So this is where the magic's. Grab you some cheap beer. Put it in here. Whisk it up. It'll probably solidify that butter again. Mm, about that much. Whisk it up. I said it'll probably solidify that butter, the cold beer, the butter solidify and that actually makes an amazing butter if you take that butter and scrape it off it's called beer butter oh my gosh guys you want a little secret recipe for heaven I'm sure they're making it up there we're just put this just five to ten seconds don't want that beer cooking you just want to make sure that butter that top layer of butter melts back down so there's eight seconds that should be plenty so that right there guys I discovered that just fooling around in the kitchen when I didn't have all the ingredients I needed to make this and it's been the way I've done it ever since. So then you're going to add a little milk, a little splash of milk, a little egg, perfect little egg, whisk that up, get that egg whisked up. Now it's not done could use that plain. We like flavor here on the Outdoor Idiot. Use cayenne pepper, but if you got it, use it. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We got Everglades heat. This stuff is amazing. Works perfect. Be a little liberal. Be, you know, don't be afraid to get some spice in your life. There we go. Maybe add a hair more. I like it. Here, this doesn't equate to a ton of spice on the fish itself so you want to yeah, you want about that color again guys gotta have a good eyeball here in the south but what i know is this is going to be good because i just know it's down in my soul it's telling me it's going to be good all right just got the oil going got that going throw some of these make our life easier just go to get these ready you know, if you had a big old griddle do them on that this is what we have what we're using you don't even have to crisp them up, but they're so much better if crispy. I'm actually, no, I'm gonna eat way more than that, so we'll just sort of save some space here. Get two extras on there, that should be plenty. Alright, those will sit there until that's preheated, and I'll pop them in, but now they're ready to go. I'm having a mixed bag tonight, and that will just go to show you that this fish taco recipe is amazing no matter what fish you use whatever you're catching this will work for that I promise you that we'll show you how the wife prepares the sides this is the real key to this recipe 
She's gonna do some sauce. So this fish taco sauce is absolutely essential for the fish tacos. It makes them so good. And if y'all know me, y'all know I'm not a big mayonnaise person. So I do a hybrid of sour cream and yogurt, just plain yogurt. I'm gonna grab a spoon here. So just like Caleb, I don't really measure anything either. So you just kind of scoop you some yogurt in there. Makes a nice creamy base for the still sauce. Scoop out sour cream. Get these all mixed up. And then for the seasonings, we're gonna do cumin, dill weed, oregano, and some lime juice. And then of course we'll add Caleb's secret ingredient, the cayenne pepper, just to give it a little spice. A little bit of cumin. Got a lifelong relationship with cayenne pepper, guys. A little bit of dill weed. Having an arrangement. There's some oregano in there. We're gonna do some juice. Usually I try to do about one lime's worth. Hopefully that's close. All right. Then we're gonna whip this all up. Chop up a jalapeno really fine, throw that in there for some spice, and we will be money, ready to go. All right, so I called him back up with Caleb and his handy knife skills. Got a jalapeno cut up for toppings. He's got some cilantro chopped up. Got a nice onion chopped up and he's gonna help me whip this slaw together really quick. Here, I'll let you do your part. You Let's this see how you whip this slaw up. It is the easiest thing you'll do. Caleb does all the hard work, catching the fish, laying the fish, putting those tacos together. I kinda got it easy with the sides. Okay, so this slaw. This is just cabbage, carrots, red cabbage, you can get it at any grocery store. i going to throw a bunch of this in here. This adds a really nice crunch to the fish tacos. So you're going to do slaw, add the cabbage, hefty squeeze of lime juice. I'm not really sure how much that is, but until you can taste it. Then we're going to do about a fourth cup of cilantro and half an onion. And that's it guys, it's that simple. We're just gonna get this mixed up with a fork. And it'll be ready to serve. Making a mess as usual, but mom said we can make a mess if we clean it up. So we make a lot of messes and we do a lot of clean. So true. So when you're frying stuff, the magic formula. Dry, wet, dry, guys. That wet batter's gotta have something to stick on to. And so does the dry one. Oh, it's a little hot. I'm gonna turn it off just for a second to let it cool down. I don't wanna burn this fish. But dry, wet, dry, guys. What is that? DWD? Dry, wet, dry. Is that, uh, what do you guys remember? The WWJD? What would Jesus do? This is almost equally as important. Close second. Dry, wet, dry. And we'll just let them hang out in that dry bowl until I'm ready to put them all in that oil. DWD. Better start making some bracelets. That should be done. So a trick, take your flour, throw it in your oil. That's how you know it's ready. And that's about perfect, so it's not going too fast and this fish will cool it down some. Just take it always, I, mean, I don't always, but what they say is lay it away from you. Like that. And we'll throw these in there as well. Save us some time. A smoky oven. Always making a mess. So lay them away. Lay them away. Get one more good one in there. Perfect. Man, this is so good. Alright guys, we're giving these a little flip here. 
So there's sort of two methods here. Some people only like to flip them once because they want to keep all that breading on there, but I sort of think they crisp up if you give them a couple flips throughout. But you don't want to flip them too early, otherwise you will lose all that breading. Oh yeah. We earned that money, people. Look at that. Oh. In the money right there. Oh yeah. Oh, those look good. Give them one more flip and I think they're going to be money. Oh, look at that. Perfectly golden. Just flip them over one more again. That's why I like to give them a few more flips because they, one extra one at least, because they crisp up really good. You sort of flip them back and forth. Again, it's a science. You don't want to flip them too much. Just another minute or so. This ready right here. I think this is the key too, guys paper towel to catch the excess grease or some sort of towel if you don't want to waste paper towel just throw a regular towel down and wash it but throwing them on there immediately after they come out of that grease and catch up that grease and then you really get a crispy fish after that so it makes all the difference rather than just throwing it onto a bare plate and then that grease sort of sops in there and it gets soggy got to have some sort of grease absorbent thing a paper towel is cheap and easy Alright, I think we're about in the money on this. About in the money. Oh yeah, I believe that one's a catfish and these two are one of the crappie. Yeah, yeah. Another one, cover it up. Now don't turn the microwave on, but stick them in here and keep them hot. If you have more to fry. So don't microwave them, I'm make them rubbery, but if you have more to fry, uh, they're supposed to be laying away for me. Again, my hands are made of leather. If you watch me enough, you'll know that. I could dip them in there, I have on occasion. Get a dip. Well, these tortillas here might be a little smoky for a second. That's from my previous cooking. I dropped a little in there. Oh yeah, these are perfect, guys. A little crisp to them, but they're not too crispy. Perfect. Yeah, cause you want to still be able to mold them around a the taco. Once you take them out of the oven, too, they will dry up a little harder. So uh, be aware of that if you're going to do this recipe. We'll take those. I wish we had some more paper plates, but I keep forgetting them. We'll go to the store. I'll just put that right on top there. We'll stick this back in there just to get it out of the way. Don't flip it too early, you lose all that bread. But we want to give it a couple flips. Give it a little flip here, guys. Oh, yeah. I'll be in the money. I used to manage a Papa John's. And so every day I would come home just covered in our flour mixture from slapping dough. So this little bit of flour is nothing to me. Probably where I got so good at cleaning up messes, guys. I think I make a mess in my own kitchen. You think well, <laughs> you should see what I do in a corporate kitchen. Guys, I think I got everything somewhat cleaned up. So now after dinner, just take care of some dishes and leave. less work for us to do when they're all tired. Oh, these are looking perfect. Perfect. These are gonna be real crispy. I 
light them just like that. Take them out of that grease. We're going to be in the money, guys. Let me show you one of these real quick. Oh, perfect. I'm going to sneak a piece. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. Oh. I don't disagree with that guy. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, me and that piece of fish are getting along. Okay, guys, I'll show you how we build them here. So, take your taco shell. What I like to do is add a little of this on the bottom here first, right? And come back and get some more later, but that on the bottom. Get you a piece of fish here. Get a real fresh one. Oh yeah. Oh. Then come over here. Get you some slaw. This is key, guys. Adds that crunch. It is key. Key. Love that. Wife doesn't like too much extra. She puts it all in there. So those are mainly for myself. But a little, a little more sauce on there. Oh. Don't tell me it was in the heaven. If we had fresh limes, that would be best. I always want to go just a drizzle of lime juice. Let's get a picture of that. Here you go, sweetheart. I'll trade you here. That looks amazing. Pray real quick. Please, our Lord, bless this food. Thank you for all that you do for us, and thank you for today. And thank you for allowing me to go out there and get a bag of fish, even though it was tough conditions, Lord. We really appreciate everything you do. Please bless this food. Amen. All right, baby. So good. Moment of truth. I love fish tacos, honey. It's the right mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything is so good. I didn't see a money shot of that. No one makes better fish tacos than we do here at the house. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you've stayed with us this far. Fishing, cleaning, and cooking all in one video. Trying something new here, so. I guess it's not new, new to me, I guess, but I love y'all. Thank you for, thank you for watching. Uh, it, you're a support and encouragement. It means everything to me, guys. Every kind word I hear from my friends and family, it just, it keeps me going, keeps me making these videos. So I love you guys. Stay tuned for the next one. We go lots of jalapenos on the Outdoor Idiots Taco. Oh yeah, I'm on something good. I don't know what it is. It's fighting hard. Wouldn't be surprised if it's a bass. Oh, it's got me wrapped in some weed, so... Oh, are you kidding?